Looking at the recruitment figures, um, you know, particularly the comparison between nationalist and unionist enlistment, uh, what does that tell us about uh, how the communities uh, responded to the war? Well, if the unionist uh, Protestants, who we assume are more unionist than not, um, are more likely to join up than Catholics, okay? On the nationalist side, there are kind of conditional loyalties. Um, and the loyalty that Redmond speaks to is a loyalty which depends on Britain having granted home rule and admit the great nationalist achievement, and then we can do this. Um, uh, another problem in Ireland is uh, it's primarily agricultural, you know, in the countryside. If, if agricultural areas recruit less well than industrial areas. There are fewer people about uh, to do this, and it, Ireland recruits quite badly in the agricultural bits, a bit like parts of England do this as well. Um, but you can't make absolute hard and fast statements about nationalist unionist uh, enlistments. For example, although in Ulster unionists or Protestants are more likely to join up than Catholics, in Leinster Catholics are more likely to join up than Protestants. Uh, in Munster and Connaught it's about equal to the proportion of the population. So you have to be a bit careful about making flip judgments. And once they've joined up, nationalists and unionists uh, are treated very differently by the British Army establishment, and particularly by Lord Kitchener. Well, up to a point. Mm. Um, uh, Kitchener is against uh, British Army units running themselves. He says, this is our army, uh, you do what we say, and that's the nature of armies. Um, and he's not very happy about there being kind of sectional divisions. Uh, now, he loses that one because not only do the Ulster Division want to be an Ulster Division, and Redmond wants there to be an Irish Division, and he, he, he sees there a whole Irish Army Corps would be a wonderful achievement. But the Welsh want one as well, and Lloyd George is in the Cabinet, and he's a powerful proponent for this. So he gets North uh, Midland Divisions for England, he gets Scottish Divisions, he gets Ulster Divisions, he gets Irish Divisions. Now, what happens in Ireland, of course, is that, yes, the Ulster Division gets better uh, favoured because they can bring the whole package to the War Office. They have um, uh, a lot of ex-servicemen who've already been involved in this, so they can just sort of move straight into officer positions. A lot of the officers of the Irish Volunteers are amateur. They haven't been, they haven't been, for example, they don't have uh, officer training corps in the schools. Um, public school boys and the Protestant schools in the north have these OTCs, so these guys come out and they can just be sort of stamped straight away with them unmistakable stamp, the British officers kind of thing. And, and Kitchener uh, resists uh, 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 calls from Redmond and the Nationalists, um, in fact, to, 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 to convert, as it were, uh, en masse the Irish volunteers into the 16th Irish Division. And that's a mistake. Um, it's a political mistake. It might be a military sense, but it's a political mistake, certainly.